Looking back, now no love, find it work, cause I'm running for my background, sitting on that couch, laying on my plans out, get it planned out, I'm follow through without my hands out, making plays every day without a life coach, dream big, sleep blessed, so you can live your life broke, still teach. Hey yo, what's good with everybody, man, I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessing like I always say, it's one life, one chance, when they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done, with that being said, let's do this, got a couple of questions that were asked for me by some subscribers, so you know, you know what I mean? I got to attend to that. I know you like my war stories, but I got to attend to the questions, bro. You already know that. So let's get right into the video. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections. Hit the links in the description, man. The album link is right there. Run the streams up. That's all I ever ask from you guys. Just bump my music. Whether I'm trash or fire, you know, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's not, I'm, it's not for everybody's ear, but let's, you know, let's, you know, I'm just... Promote your boy's music one time. That's all I ever asked. Two questions I got to answer. One of them is they wanted to know the difference between a half 60 and a full 60. So let me break it down for y'all. A half 60 is this. We have a lot of protocol. Sometimes when you're a... Uh, you hold, uphold the upper, upper CLC positions like Northanio Administration 1 and 2. Like myself, I've held them both. The Northanio Administration 1 is going to implement protocols and squad procedures and squad drills to defend and protect the household or if we need to engage in battle. Northanio administration two, which would be the overall, the overseer of the of the yard department, is gonna work hand in hand with the yard channels, the yard securities, the squad leaders and the squad uh, squad members to secure specific protocols designed to protect the yard. So when you're in, like me, I was mostly on level four. As a level three designs, you know, I had some experience with it. It's a little bit different. The environments are bigger. The yards are bigger. The terrain you have to memorize and so on and so forth. That one's a little bit different. But so I'm only going to speak on behalf of the level four 180 designs. In my case, there was two buildings. Each one of them had 15, you know, ends that I had to secure. So I would I would draft up plans for this uh, for the uh, for the block channel. In which it would go about it like this. If the homies were in, if their homies were all in one section, then I could secure that section. You know, we would identify primary targets, suspected mess on members, or individuals of influence for any car. And I would tell the homies, all right, this is what you guys are gonna do. We're gonna assign two or three hitters with thank things, with bombers, with pedazos, and those three. His primary objective is to go after these individuals. Then we're going to look at it like where's the, where's the area that is neutral and where's the area where the oppositionals kick it, which were the whites and the southerners. So we'd identify where exactly their locations are and we'd always construct a plan of attack to where we end up in a neutral zone, divided, Split in a couple of groups, but not obvious. But some are still secure in our area, with the, which we share with the blacks and the and everybody else and the others and the Asians. And we designed a plan of attack to where we would the the three hitters would go hit the primary targets, and the rest would hit the rest of the groups to keep them far apart as much as possible in order for these primary targets to be got rid of. That's how it usually worked, and that's how. And so when I say I have 60, it means I'm going to notify whether it's the yard or whether it's the building that, hey, there's a possibility that there's going to be a potential threat or there's a possibility for a possible removal to go down. Because sometimes, you know, plans of attacks and, uh, and removal drills that need to be implemented to actually take one of our own out, it doesn't happen all the time, like planned out. Sometimes... A circumstance might arise where I have to make a sudden decision on a sudden impulse that, you know, he needs to do it right now, you know, or else this individual could, you know, disrupt the program. This individual can hurt one of our own. This individual has the potential to go and attack somebody else. You know, the possibilities are endless. So you have to plan it and think about that in the cell all day, every day. So sometimes if I say, hey, man, half 60, that means to get ready. That gives me enough time for homies to, you know, all right, stop working out. Or make sure your shoes are laced. Find your positions. You know, sometimes, you know, they'll send two homies to the benches, two homies per table, a couple homies in the in the workout area, and a couple homies towards the neutral area. So we can make sure that every angle that could be reached towards us 
it's secure and every angle that we need to position our homies to get a to get a wide full blown attack so homies can hit all areas instead of getting bunched up and then surrounded that's how pretty much protocol and plans of attack work. They're called POAs, plans of attacks and then drills, so on and so forth. We practice that every day. Sometimes, you know, there wouldn't be a, a serious matter that's taking place or a potential threat, but I would just do a full 60 or I'll say a half 60 just to see if homies are prepared. Because sometimes, you know, we go months without anything taking place, any negative activity, any uh, potential threats, you know, being brought upon us. So we homies kind of get relaxed, so we have to make sure we're always on our toes. So sometimes I might do it, watch it move in effect, but the most important thing is discretion. When I say it, homies can't be just panicking and getting serious. You got to be able to show, have a poker face. You got to be able to maneuver, maneuver and move gently, but swiftly. Get to your locations, and you better make sure that that thing is sticking halfway out your, your, your kulilits. Being ready to attack. Full 60 is pretty much me saying, hey, get ready. It's going down in the DM. So if it's in the building, every individual is going to reach his designated location and drop right there. And you better hope you drop because if we go and, you know, I give the signal and you don't get caught with it or you and nobody can identify that you used it. You're going to be in some of the ugliest turmoil ever because, you know, one of the bonds said you are to defend and protect the household to the fullest. Anything otherwise is going to be considered coward and desertion. And you don't want that label on you, coward and desertion. The homies take that real serious. There was, a, there was a big homie. He had status. He was from Delano. The individual... I ain't going to lie, the, the, the homies did get blitzed accidentally by the Southerners, but he... As an end soul was well trained to drop like that. But instead, through the midst of all the action, he kind of froze and just started, ran and jumped into the mix and not drop it. And he got, he, he received cleanup bad. He had to report to the back and more likely, I mean, I got removed off the line after that, but more likely he was going to get stripped of his status because as an end soul and an individual with status, we are the ones to defend and protect the house. So we are the frontline individuals. It is our job to protect the next man, and he didn't drop. So the full 60 means if it's going to go up, make sure everything's dropped, make sure everything's ready, and because as soon as I give the signal, don't hesitate. Go full-fledged, full throttle. That's the difference. On the yard, a half 60 would be two homies, in a, like three groups of two homies walking the track like a triangle. There's going to be a yard post. An observation post are going to be right there by our table to make sure that nobody enters our area. They're going to defend our area. Squad members are going to go, find the pedazos that are buried, retrieve them, start walking the track. But see, the thing is, when it's a half 60, we're just walking the track. We're in, a, we're in all, all the areas that are designated to us. We have a couple of solalas right there. Not working out, not doing nothing, but just as posters, just posting, being observant, waiting for the signal. Full 60 is going to be the same thing. We're going to implement the drills and the plans of attack that we design on the yard to particularly hit particular group members or actually groups. Because we want to catch people not only off guard with the element of surprise, but we got to locate the primary target. So sometimes the target ain't in the designated location in which we design the, the plan of attack. So the plan of attack, the plan of attack will still be in effect. But these particular individuals that have been assigned to go follow that dude, they might have to alter their plans and just go chase him all around the yard like the coyote and the roadrunner. But hey, that's their job. So that's what I have 60 and a full 60 is. It's all, all it is is preparations for guerra, to get ready. Sometimes that might just be preparations to remove one of our own. But still, we practice that on a daily. And that's a filter that gets circulated every week. And people get questioned on it. We get quit. We quiz. I would go. I would have the you know either the yard security, the yard channel, the block channels. Walk up to certain individuals when they're just casually having a conversation and looks like they're having a good time. Hey, bro, where's your assigned area? Okay, go ahead and drop it real quick. Let me see it. Oh, okay, put it back up. Hey, good. Gracias. And if you couldn't drop it on call, DP 14 days because you don't know how to secure the household. You you ain't you ain't ready to defend and protect the household. If you forgot your location, 
DP. That's how a 460 and a half 60 work. Then they also asked me what's the difference between a stronghold and a foothold. Now, mind you, say I get to a yard and it's unestablished with our presence, it's going to be considered an unestablished pinta. So I start incorporating the SEME program, which is Secure, Establish, Maintain, and Educate. It's a big, it's a big educational curriculum that I had to learn and memorize, but it helps you break down how to properly establish an unestablished pinta to make it a full-fledged establishment, should I say. Once we establish it, it becomes a foothold. A stronghold is only going to be, the ideal stronghold is only going to be is when a carnal is present and we're secured. We have our own yards, our own buildings, no threat or interference of the opposition. That hardly ever happens. Pelican Bay was more or less a stronghold and headquarters. There's been a, there's been a couple of occasions where like Solano and Soledad were identified because we did have you know, sleepers that were carnales that were right there. Or sometimes, I'm only saying is sometimes, if a, if, a, if, a, if a pinta is well established and generating a lot of revenue and productivity, has contact to the reds, has contact to the, to the, to the homies in the back, it can, be, it can be considered a stronghold because if we have big numbers, we don't have to worry about ever losing that prison. That's the main point. That's the main thing when it comes to securing a pinta is that, we're so deep and well established there that nothing, even if we was to go to war, we would never lose that prison. A foothold would be like Sad F, Sea Yard. A foothold would be like uh, High Desert. Those are considered footholds. A strong front would be well secured, well established, generating revenue, but only right in the, a carnal in the back. There's no carnal presence on the yard. That's always what has been considered a stronghold when a carnal is present on the yard. Then it becomes... A stronghold because now that carna can conduct business with the with the O with the big O with the organization with the familianos and generate revenue. He's going to be solely responsible for this whole facility. That's that's how difficult it is. And a lot of a lot of times when I was busted on the main line, it was rare that I that I seen strongholds that were being identified. Everything is going to be a foothold. A foothold meaning is pretty much is like we 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 got our foot in the door. Our footing has been set in place, but there's still a lot to establish. Because sometimes we can be there three, four, five years, but our communication with the opposition, with the South, with the Mesa, with the with the uh, with the skins and the ABs, you know, it's very still unbalanced. You know, we're still working out the kinks. We're still working on generating revenue. We're not making enough money in order for the familianos to say, you know, what well, this is a well-established pinta. You know, this let's try not to lose this mainline. Because, like I said, sad F for me was a was a was a was a foothold because you know we wrote Mondo, but oftentimes, like sometimes Mondo wouldn't get back, so Sombra would get back, or somebody else would get back, and then I was con I was in contact with two other C's on the street, so they were giving us directives and all kinds of stuff. So you know it was very unbalancing, and plus the realignment filter was trying to put everybody back in their positions of who's the regiment commander from here, who's the regiment commander for here, and while. We didn't have a regiment commander in contact with at the time, even though he was assigned to the prison. We had to go find other resources to make sure that we were still in accordance to bond number nine, which is, you know, working hand in hand in unison with other facilities. So sometimes I had to write the regiment to find out what was going on in other facilities and what the Carnales wanted in the back in order to be in alignment with everything that was taking place. It gets complicated. It gets real complicated. You'll rarely ever see or hear about a pinta that has been well established. Like I said, the level threes, some of them were more identified as strongholds just based on the fact that a lot of carnales were able to make it there or having contact with the streets and they were generating, I'm talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of weekly, man. Their household banks then were look crazy compared to what the level fours. Level fours we're always on lockdown, so sometimes that six months to a year lockdown, like how it used to be, not now, but how it used to be, made it a lot harder for us to establish food because now we're like, we're six months behind. And when we get off of a lockdown, there's a certain procedure and protocol we have to do. We have to go reestablish contact with everybody. We have to reestablish the pipelines. We have to reestablish generating revenue. We have to go collect all the debts. We have to resecure the yard with, with pedazos and bangers because they didn't dug up the whole yard and found all of them, so we have to put them back there. You know, it's like it's starting over. It's like we have to rephase it, rephase it, rephase it. And it makes it difficult to establish a strong, established pinta on level fours. 
But High Desert was considered one of the good one of the good ones. That's the difference. So I hope I answered your questions to the best of my ability. I will be back later with another video. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When I got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.